Former Cub Yu Darvish throws so many pitches, it's almost comical at this point. If he were to add two or three more, then I don't think there'd be any new pitches left for him to learn. Today, we're going to be focusing on a few of those pitches, specifically talking about what the difference is between four-seam and two-seam fastballs. But before we jump into it, guys, if you enjoy the content you're seeing on this channel and you want to continue to see more of it, it'd mean a lot if you'd click that subscribe button. I'm a numbers guy, and only about 30% of the people who watch these videos are actually subscribed. So show your support by clicking the subscribe button down below. Now before we jump into this video, we are going to need to cover a few key metrics. I've done videos on all of these topics in the past, so if you want an in-depth dive on any of the things we talk about today, take a look down in the description. Today, we're going to be covering spin axis, or direction, spin rate, and horizontal and vertical movement. Since we have covered these metrics extensively over the lifetime of the channel, I'm going to keep these descriptions short and sweet. First, we have spin axis. Simply stated, this metric is the description of how each pitch is spinning. It's not the axis that the pitch is spinning around, rather the direction it's spinning from. Shown as time on the clock, this example of pitch has a spin axis of about 1230. Then we have spin rate. This measures how fast each pitch is spinning. Since we are talking about fastballs, the average Major League fastball has a spin rate of 2400. We typically don't rely strictly on spin rate to make our analysis of pitches. Shout out to Bauer units. But to keep today's video simple, we are going to do just that. Finally, we have our movement plots, which describes how each pitch moves. You can think of this like your output if you were to combine spin axis and spin rate. In this example of a 1230 spin axis and a 24 RPM pitch, you would end up right around here on our movement plot. However, if you change your spin axis, you can see how this would affect where that pitch would end up. Same goes for changing spin rate. If you had a lower spin rate, this dot would move closer to that center point. All right, there's your quick recap. Now let's hop over to how this can actually be applied to pitching. When talking about fastballs, you'll typically have pitches that fall into two major categories. The first being fastballs with hop, and the second being fastballs with sink. Let's cover how the metrics we talked about in the last clip differ from one another when talking about hop and sink. First, we will cover fastballs with hop. These are typically four seam fastballs. If we were to group this pitch by its spin axis, we would typically see it fall in the 12 to 130 range for righties and the 1030 to 12 o'clock range for lefties. Spin rate then is where this pitch typically separates itself from the rest. If 2400 is the average MOB spin rate, pitches with hop will rise above that range. The higher the spin, the more hop you'll see. One of the reasons for a higher spin rate on this pitch compared to sinkers is that they're typically thrown with finger pressure on the seams. This allows the pitcher to rip down through the seams and the seam orientation allows for less drop vertically. This is a short summary of a somewhat complex subject, so if you'd like to hear more about this, let me know in the comments. Anyways, based on our two inputs, if we look at our vertical and horizontal break output, aka movement, you'll almost always see a higher vertical movement figure than horizontal movement for a fastball with quote unquote hop. The higher your RPMs, the higher your vertical movement will be. Now on to sinkers or two seamers. Taking a look at our spin axes for this pitch, you'll see a slightly lower number for both righties and lefties. For righties, this will hit at about 1.30 to 3 o'clock, and lefties, 9 to 10.30. For our spin rate, this number is typically lower than average, which allows gravity to pull the ball down just a little bit more than our fastballs with hop. To decrease spin rate, this pitch can be thrown with your fingers off of the seams on the smooth part of the ball. This creates less friction at release, lowering your RPMs. Your output, then, is going to reflect what we've seen in the first two figures showing a pitch with more horizontal break than vertical. So that's a general overview of the difference between the two pitches. Now, let's take a look at how one pitcher can effectively use both. To absolutely nobody's surprise, Yu Darvish throws both of these pitches. So let's take a look at his metrics for each. On the four seam, Darvish sports a 1230-130 to 130 spin direction in 2020. His spin rate is slightly higher than league average, and he sees much more vertical break on the fastball than he does any horizontal break. On his two-seam, we will notice a slightly lower spin direction of 130 to 230, as well as about 100 less RPMs on this pitch. The movement on the pitch reflects what we talked about in the last slide, where he has more horizontal break than vertical break. So numerically, there's definitely a difference between these two pitches. But is that different when you're watching video? Well, I'll leave that up to you. So how can this information be best applied to individual pitchers out there deciding if or how to best use either fastball as part of their repertoire? In the past, Many guys throw what's been comfortable for them all their life. And when asked the question, are you a four seam or a two seam guy? They probably wouldn't have a logical response to that. But with the advances in technology occurring at all levels of the game, we are lucky to understand how each guy's stuff should play best. If that athlete has low spin and a lower arm action, then 
they most likely profile better with a two seam. And on the flip side, if they have a high spin or a higher arm slot, they may do better with a four seam. But as we saw with Darvish, this doesn't always have to be one or the other. However, understanding the differences of each pitch and where they best play in the zone is essential when beginning to game plan each pitcher's arsenals. Thanks for tuning in to today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. If you want to keep learning more, here's a video and a playlist that I think you'd enjoy checking out. I'll catch you in the next one.